Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to talk to you about uh, international cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region. I was asked by the organ organizers to focus on this. Now, the Indo-Pacific region as a concept it has not yet found acceptance by the international community as a whole, or even if or even all the countries belonging to this region, much less the two major powers that are geographically part of it. China has concerns that about this concept because it believes it is part of an American strategy to ring fence it. Russia is not in favor because it believes the concept revives block politics harking back to the Cold War. It sees the concept as targeting Russia too. But China and Russia continue to use the term Asia-Pacific, which is older as a concept and excludes them and has an economic trust and not a security one. Now, both are members, as we know, of the Asia-Pacific cooperation. ASEAN too has not accepted Indo-Pacific as a working concept. In reality, ASEAN is wary about this concept developing into a new security forum centered on maritime security, reducing as a consequence the centrality of ASEAN in developing a regional security architecture in Asia. The origin of the concept would make many countries cautious about endorsing it. They would see it as related to the sharpening of Japan-China territorial differences in the East China Sea and Prime Minister Abe's desire to amend Japan's constitution to allow the country to play a more active regional defense role. When Prime Minister Abe spoke of the confluence of the two seas in his address to the Indian Parliament in 2007, he made a strategic link between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Later in 2012, when he spoke about Asia's democracy security diamond, he made his concerns about China clear when he stated that peace, stability, and freedom of navigation in the Pacific Ocean were inseparable from that in the, in the Indian Ocean and that Japan, as one of the oldest seafaring democracies in Asia, should play a greater role alongside Australia, India, and the U.S. in preserving the common good in both regions. In this background, one cannot as yet talk of broad-based international cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region, though one can certainly talk of reinforced India, Japan, U.S., Australia cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region, with France endorsing it and uh, the European Union paying increasing attention to it. Now, India took a major step, strategic step, by signing a document with the United States on a joint strategic vision for Asia Pacific and the Indian Ocean regions. By this, India accepted that the security of the Asia Pacific and the Indian Ocean regions was linked, and that the two countries had shared concerns and responsibilities to maintain peace and security in this extended maritime domain. Burden sharing would logically be part of this by way of logistics cooperation, interoperability, and the build-up of India's maritime capabilities. The maritime threats to peace and stability in the Indian Ocean emanate from India, nor from the United States. India has no unresolved maritime disputes with its neighbors, barring Pakistan in the Kutch area and the Arabian Sea. The source of current maritime threats in the Indo-Pacific region is China. Its illegal mine-dash line in the South China Sea, reclamation of rocks and reefs in the South China Sea and militarizing them, disputes with Japan over the Senkaku, Vietnam over the Spratlys, Philippines over the Scarborough Shores, Indonesia and Brunei have raised tensions in the region. China has stalled the negotiations on a code of conduct in the South China Sea because it wants to present fait accompli to its neighbors. Its massive naval expansion plans 
are a cause of concern. Coupled with declared ambitions to develop a blue water navy to protect its sea lanes of communication and rapidly growing overseas assets. China is expanding its presence in the Indian Ocean with development of ports in key countries such as Myanmar and Sri Lanka, apart from similar efforts in Bangladesh and Maldives. The China Pakistan Economic Corridor that links Xinjiang to Gwadar in Pakistan gives China access to the Arabian Sea, and the China Myanmar Corridor gives its access to the Bay of Bengal. These two corridors are intended to ease China's Malacca dilemma. More importantly, these corridors are the link between the land and maritime dimensions of China's Belt and Road Initiative. This implies that for the first time in history, one single power would dominate both the Asian landmass and the seas around it. This would be a huge geopolitical development with very serious security implications for the rest of the world. China is developing dual-use ports in the Indian Ocean. In addition to its base in Djibouti, China will almost certainly develop a naval base in Pakistan. This will facilitate China's expansion towards the Gulf and Africa. Chinese submarines have already surfaced in Sri Lanka and Pakistan. India and the United States have been conducting the Malabar exercise in the Indian Ocean uh, for some years now. The uh, exercise has been made tri trilateral with Japan's permanent participation. Protecting the sea, of sea, sea lanes of communications, combating privacy, trafficking, smuggling, terrorism, and supporting HADR are shared objectives. India has signed a logistics agreement and an interoperability agreement with the United States and has acquired advanced American maritime surveillance capabilities. India, US, and Japan have held naval exercises in the Sea of Japan. 55% of India's trade passes through the South China Sea, and therefore, India backs freedom of navigation and overflights in this maritime zone. India and Japan support a free and open Indo-Pacific and politi politically cooperate with each other to affirm this. The foundation of defense ties between the two countries is also being built. In 2018, India and Japan signed a maritime domain awareness agreement covering white shipping. This creates the basis for intelligence and information sharing going beyond commercial shipping, commercial shipping in the future, especially as Japan has a potent maritime reconnaissance fleet. A logistics AXA type agreement between the two countries is being discussed, which will undoubtedly contribute to regional peace and security in the Indo-Pacific Ocean by allowing India access to Japan's base in Djibouti. Such an agreement would have the potential of the Indian Navy obtaining access to Japan, Japanese bases in Okinawa and thus sustain itself in the Western Pacific. India and Japan have agreed to develop smart islands in India, which opens the door to India-Japan collaboration in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. India-Australia defense cooperation is being stepped up with a focus on the Indo-Pacific. In early September this year, India's naval chief was in Australia. In November, India's defense minister will be visiting Australia, and the expectation is that a mutual logistics agreement support will be signed, um, as well as a broader maritime cooperation agreement, important for maritime domain awareness, and this will elevate the strategic partnership. <laughs> Bilateral naval exercises with Australia are being scaled up with the third expanded OS index exercise, which saw a participation of a thousand Australian naval contingent. This was conducted off the coast of Vishakhapatnam on the east coast of India in April uh, this year. Uh, according to, the, to an Indian government statement, the enhanced complexity of this exercise was indicative of the interoperability of the two navies. So far, however, Australia has not been excluded, included in the trilateral India-US-Japan Malabar exercise, and I hope it will be included. 
along with this, the quad concept, India, US, Japan, Australia, which we have talked about, is getting more traction. Uh, four official level meetings of the Quad have been held until now, with the first meeting of the Quad at foreign ministers level being held on the margins of the UN General Assembly in New York. A major political decision has been taken. India believes in keeping the Quad separate from the Indo-Pacific concept, as it is narrow in scope involving only four countries and has a military dimension in addition to a political one. Australia, for example, has been keen to join the Malabar exercise to make it quadrilateral. While the Quad is separate from the Indo-Pacific concept, it will bolster it as an additional arrangement to promote peace, stability, and rule of law in the region. The agenda of Quad goes beyond maritime security, with issues like counterterrorism, cyber security, humanitarian and disaster relief, development finance, etc., etc. China's Belt and Road Initiative, announced in 2013, has won its many constituencies in the Indo-Pacific region. China is the biggest trade partner of ASEAN. It has offered mega infrastructure products to some ASEAN countries and has targeted key countries such as Myanmar, Malaysia, and Thailand for connectivity projects. It has succeeded in reclaiming and militarizing the South China Sea Island without triggering the U.S. intervention. It has succeeded in dividing ASEAN on South China Sea issues. The U.S. under President Trump is no longer seen as reliable as before as a security and economic ally. Trump's policies towards North Korea have caused uncertainty in the region. China's trade and investment ties with Japan, Australia, and U.S. are huge. Even with India, trade is very considerable. This has a bearing on how far other countries in the Indo-Pacific region would be willing to go to challenge China head on. ASEAN is concerned about mounting U.S.-China tensions. It would rather not have to choose sides between the two, because while the U.S. is important for them for security, China is important for trade, and they would like to avoid binary choices and prefer instead to have the best of both worlds. Similar concerns are being expressed in Australia, given the vital economic ties the country has with China. Japan has to strike a balance between its massive economic interest in China and its real concerns about China's unlawful and aggressive maritime conflict. India views China as the biggest, as its biggest strategic adversary, but has to recognize the reality of the Indo-Pacific concept not covering its, its land threat from China, the China-Pakistan nexus, the geopolitical danger of the Chinese-Pakistan economic corridor, the exclusion of the Arabian Sea from the ambit of America's Indo-Pacific command, and so on. India has therefore to keep China engaged, knowing that, that it has to address its issues with China essentially on its own. The unpredictability of Trump's America does not help in forging truly robust policies toward China by others. In this context, Prime Minister Modi's speech at the Shangri-La Dialogue in 2018 deserves attention as it deals except that it dealt extensively with the Indo-Pacific concept. He noted that India is helping to improve maritime security for our friends and partners, promoting collective security through forums like Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, and advancing a comprehensive agenda of regional cooperation to the Indian Ocean Rim Association, besides working with partners beyond the Indian Ocean to ensure that the global transit routes remain peaceful and free for all. Prime Minister Modi recognized in his speech that an important pillar of the India-US partnership is our shared vision of an open, stable, secure, and prosperous Indo-Pacific region. Importantly, he noted that India's relations with Indonesia had been upgraded to a comprehensive strategic partnership with a common vision for maritime cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. The Indo-Pacific is a natural region, according to him. The 10 countries of Southeast Asia connect the two great oceans in both the geographical and civilizational sense. Inclusiveness, openness, and ASEAN centrality and unity, therefore, 
lie at the heart of the new Indo-Pacific. India does not see the Indo-Pacific region as a strategy or a club of limited members or directed against any country. India's vision for the Indo-Pacific region is, he said, a positive one. Its many elements are, one, it stands for a free, open, inclusive region. It includes all nations in this geography and also others beyond who have a stake in it. Two, Southeast Asia is, a, is at its center and ASEAN has been and will be central to its future. Three, a common rules-based order for the region should be evolved through dialogue. Such an order must believe in sovereignty and territorial integrity as well as equality of all nations irrespective of size and strength. And four, uh, there are many connectivity initiatives in this region. These must be based on respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, consultation, good governance, transparency, viability, and sustainability. They must empower nations, not place them under impossible debt burden. They must promote trade, not strategic competition. I think the purpose in, for our Prime Minister to focus on the centrality of ASEAN is that if ASEAN develops doubts about the Indo-Pacific and fears that it might be, the centrality might be excluded, then the Indo-Pacific concept will not be able to advance and progress the way that we would wish. India is cooperating with Indonesia and Singapore. LA, ASEAN concerns about the Indo-Pacific concept. The ASEAN countries fear that this concept may reduce their centrality in developing a regional security architecture in Asia. India has strong ties with Vietnam. It continues to pay attention to Thailand uh, and uh, uh, considers and Myanmar as a key country for developing East-West uh, connectivity. India has patiently watched the situation in Maldives turn in its favor. It is keeping a close eye on Chinese activities in Sri Lanka and has stepped up, stepped up its own political, economic, and cultural engagement with its neighbor. India is active in forging stronger ties with Indian Ocean island states, including Seychelles and Mauritius. India has in May 2018 signed a joint strategic vision for cooperation in the Indian Ocean region with France. This will cover the southwestern Indian Ocean region in particular, with maritime security, combating privacy, terrorism, etc. at its center. This cooperation will assist in keeping an eye on non-regional naval activities in the Horn of Africa and the eastern seaboard of Africa in particular through the Mozambique Channel. India and France have also signed a logistics agreement. In short, India has actively participated in forging international cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region as broadly as possible and at different levels.